I'm set. Kick it. Go. Go. Well, that sounds good to me. Do you have any problems with the courts? Yeah, I just won the Supreme Court. They threw it out. Well, now, why'd they do that? You had the consent of the wife. You know, there's some things about this knock and notice stuff that bother me. How did I get you for a partner, anyway? What do you mean? I mean, where were you doing Hadley Blake's on excuse? He laid it all out, consent and everything. Oh, yeah, I'll bet that's when I was off to cover for Jackson. What do you say about consent? Come on, I'll tell you. Normally, before you can kick in a door, you've got to knock, announce yourself, and explain why you're there, right? All right. There's three main areas when you do not have to comply with any of those requirements. Like if the guy inside is trying to escape, right? Or if he's trying to destroy evidence. And the other times, if there's going to be more chance of someone getting hurt if you do announce yourself than if you don't. That's simple enough. No, not so simple. You've got to look at each situation separately. You need specific information at the scene for instance, Hadley was telling us about a case where... Is that the house? Sure is, 1636 Maple. What do you think? I think we kick it. If this dude knows we're outside, he's going to try and do us. How are we going to get by knock and notice? Well... Remember what Records said about his uh, last two arrests. Each time he's had a 45 with him. Do you use it? You see his rap sheet? Loaded with violence. ADWs, assaults, you name it. Look, I want to nail this guy, and I want this bus to stick. But with prior information like that, it's not going to get by knock and notice. I think we should have something at the scene to use. The okay, officer is following sure. recent cases and advising his partner that prior information about a suspect may not be sufficient to excuse noncompliance with knock and notice statutes. Those cases say that the common law exceptions to knock and notice pertain only to emergency situations at the time of entry. In other words, unannounced entry is excused only on the basis of emergency circumstances existing at the time an officer approaches a site to make an arrest or execute a warrant. Why don't you go around and cover the back? Hold it. There's a piece on the couch. I think this guy's going to be in business. Come on over. Door's locked. We have to kick it. And the court held out a good entry. They didn't have to knock and notice and explain why they were there. They had specific information on the guy, that he was probably armed and liked to shoot when resisting arrest. But most importantly, they saw he had a weapon inside the house at the time of the arrest and was likely to use it. And he was standing in a place where he had a right to be, the front porch, when he saw the gun. Well, what about a narc case? You know, where the suspect can flush the stuff down the john before you finish your spiel on the porch. Hadley said there's a general rule about a case like that. He said that... Looks like they're not here yet. How do you know? Well, there's supposed to be a green matador parked out front. The surveillance team said they should be there by now. Uh, what the hell? Why wait? Let's go in and get the evidence and then wait for them. Ah, uh, it's fine, Moncho. You can't do that. Look, we'll do everything right. We'll knock, tell them who we are and why we're here. We'll even wait a few minutes before we kick the door. That's great, but it's illegal. You gotta have good faith belief that your suspect's actually inside before you go in. Otherwise, the court will throw it out. Look, somebody's coming.
Officer Barnes was correct when he told his partner they needed a reasonable belief that the suspect was in the house before they could enter. Being experienced narcotics officers, they know narcotic suspects usually try to destroy evidence if they realize police are nearby. But this alone is not enough to excuse compliance with the knock and notice rules. Compliance will be excused only if at the time the police act, they have specific facts indicating that evidence is about to be destroyed. Common examples of such facts are retreating footsteps, the sound of a flushing toilet, or overheard statements from the occupants that they are going to destroy the evidence. Police officers. Push it down the chance. In that case, they didn't even get an opportunity to knock on the door. The suspects gave them an excuse to go right in. If you hear any sound, like the flushing of a toilet or running footsteps, or something that reasonably leads you to believe that the occupants are fleeing, destroying the evidence, or maybe going to get their weapons, don't wait. Go right in. I forgot to tell you that hot pursuit rendering aid situation. I know about those. Well, if a guy you're chasing runs into a building or another structure, forget about knocking those and falling right in. Same goes for entering aid situations. You know, if you hear moans or other noises that sound like an emergency, forget about knocking notice and where's right in. You're tremendous, Jim. I suppose tomorrow you'll be spouting off case citations to me. Listen, there's Dick, or I'm going to talk to him about his tape, Dick. I'll see you later. All right. Let's go. We got a hot one. They found Porky. Porky? That's the fattest fence in town. This is all set up. The Jew's wife has given us consent to enter. How come? She's a ding -a -ling. Revenge or something. Who cares? It's dumb. That's enough? Let's go. Come on. I want to get this cat. Okay. Jimmy, we're going to have to kick this. Yeah, go ahead. I'm set. Kick it. Go. Go. I hear uh, Porky did a number on your knock and notice theories in court Tuesday. Yeah. What's the matter, Jim? Didn't you know the uh, person giving consent to enter had to be within the premises? Yeah, you were really a big help, weren't you? Consent to enter is a valid excuse for not complying with knock and notice requirements. However, the consent must be given by someone inside the premises. As this last vignette demonstrates, a consent given by one of the residents of a house when not inside of it is not sufficient. However, it is doubtful whether knock and notice statutes could protect a trespasser if the absent householder gave police consent to enter in order to remove him. Related to knock and notice is entry by trickery or subterfuge. 
The United States Supreme Court has told us there is nothing inherently unlawful in the use of police subterfuge in suppressing crime as long as constitutional rights are not invaded. Thus, the use of undercover operations in such areas as narcotic buy programs has been approved by the courts. However, the California courts, which tend to be stricter in these matters, have disapproved such conduct as an officer's entry gained through his positive misrepresentation that he was an appliance repairman. neighbor might be right. It sounds like a coke party. Yeah, you can practically hear the snow falling. Hey, listen, I got a way that we can get inside so we can find out exactly what's going on. People have been going up to the door all day long and just knocking, and then they just go right in. So why don't we just come on up to the door? You mean that we uh, just... Uh, yeah. Well, what about knock and notice? Don't knock it if you haven't tried it. Well, that's really funny, Winchell, but don't we have to? They say come on in and it'd be consent. You mean we're just going to knock on the door, state police officers conducting a narcotics investigation, they're just going to say, come in? No, no, no. We're going to knock. Just knock. Okay, go ahead. Come on in. The door's open. Hi, hey, come on in. Come on in. Go to party. Police officer, you're under arrest. Everybody put your hands on your head. You get over here. Let's hey, go. don't move. Don't move. Get over there. Hey, get out of where you were. Come on, right down move. Here, right down here. Move. A California Supreme Court case held this type of police action legitimate because the officers made no positive act of misrepresentation. Merely knocking on the door and being invited to come in is a consensual entry, making compliance with knock and notice statutes unnecessary. Another creative entry by Officer Jim Richardson. You want to argue with the Supreme Court? No, but it's a little riskier. Why? Well, how about no probable cause? Well, why should that make a difference? All we want to do is have a look inside. And once he opens the door, we're going to see Macy's basement anyway. Yeah? Well, how much longer is it going to be? I don't want this crap around after Friday. Yeah, 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 I know. But get this stuff out of here. I mean, how much longer can I tell the manager I'm still moving in? Huh? Fine, all I want you to do is tell him you're checking filters for gas heaters. I don't like things like this at my place. You like these for tenants? Where's his apartment? That's over here. Okay, just knock on the door. Be right behind you. All he wants a look from the hallway into the apartment. Go on. Come on. Yeah? Who's there? It's the manager. I'm just checking heating filters, Mr. Whitehouse. Yeah? Well, I'll come back later. I'm on the phone. Tell him to just take a minute. No, okay. He'll just take a minute. Okay, I'll be right there. What? Free White House. Look, what's going on here? I mean, um, hey, you guys got nothing on me. I just moved in here. I haven't had a chance to pack this stuff away yet. Yeah, we'll pack it away and you with it. On the wall. Move. On the wall. Move. On the wall. Spread out. Most courts, led by the federal courts, would find no illegality in the officer's use of trickery here since they use no force to gain entry. However, California courts, which have set trends in the search and seizure area, now generally agree that if the police have no probable cause and use trickery to gain entry into a residence, it is illegal. Note that in this case, the officers use a positive act of misrepresentation when they induce the manager to make false statements about the heater filters. He's supposed to be here, where is he? Here he comes. I wonder if he made a buy. Okay, Scobie, how much? 
half a piece. That's good enough. Any more stuff? Well, if you mean, does it look like a pharmacy? Yeah, it does. Well, I checked the place out, and that's the only exit. Are you sure that's his car over there? Hey, man, I'm sure. There's a phone booth down on the corner. I'm going to go do that, and I'll meet you back here by the car. Yeah, uh, say, look, this is a friend of Scobie's. Uh, the heat's making tracks for your place. Uh, you better get rid of your stuff. Yeah, it's okay. Forget it. I wonder if he's going to bite. Wait, I think he's coming. Police officers want to talk to you. All right, left hand on your head. Left hand on your head. Because there was no entry, but merely a ruse to draw the suspect out of his dwelling, this type of police action has been approved by the courts. The police were only providing an opportunity for Munger to incriminate himself. They did not use trickery to gain entry into his home. Now, what have we learned? We have learned that an entry by police who do not comply with knock and notice requirements is permissible only in emergency circumstances. And in addition, these emergency circumstances must be present at the time the police are approaching the site. Unannounced entries based on prior information that an emergency may exist is not sufficient. The three most common reasons for an unannounced entry are that the evidence will be destroyed, the suspects will escape, or the danger to the officers will increase if the rules are complied with. But prior knowledge that the suspects might destroy evidence or escape or shoot is not sufficient. And remember, police do not have to knock and announce where they are in hot pursuit or need to render emergency aid. Another important point is consent. Consent to enter must be given by persons within the structure. However, if the person in the house is a trespasser, it is doubtful whether he would be protected by typical knock and notice statutes if an absent householder gave police consent to enter. As to trickery or ruse, remember that it's an unsettled area, but that you can probably use these devices where you have probable cause and you perform no positive act of misrepresentation. Lastly, remember that the courts apparently do permit you to use subterfuge to draw a suspect out of a structure.